Hello, hello, and welcome to the Kubernetes and Platform Engineering series. Now, I'm gonna have a couple of videos that are gonna be in this series, and we're gonna be talking all about how Kubernetes ties into platform engineering and vice versa, okay? Now, first things first, this video, we're gonna go over Kubernetes operators and how operators can help from a platform engineering perspective. Now, first things first, a quick recap on, you know, kind of what the whole idea of Kubernetes was, is the whole mission behind it right from when it first started. The whole idea is Kubernetes is supposed to be a platform that you can use to extend and customize in any way that you want. So let's think about it like a house. When a house first goes up, you have you know the outside walls and then inside you have some wood maybe you have some insulation if you're lucky some cutouts maybe you know the main bedroom is going to go here maybe the bathroom is going to go here you're still trying to figure it all out and that's what kubernetes does as well kubernetes gives you a baseline and then you have you know your container network interfaces your container storage interfaces your container runtime interfaces you have the ability to customize it in a way of your choosing that works specifically for you. Now, another thing that comes up is how can I do this from an API perspective? How can I take an API that I want to be able to use and turn it into a Kubernetes method or a Kubernetes way? Well, that's kind of where operators come into play. So let's kind of break down what an operator is and the other components outside of an operator. So first you have your custom resource definition or your CRD, and that gives you the ability to extend the Kubernetes API utilizing a Kubernetes API itself. So you're literally using the Kubernetes API to extend and make your own API. And you can do that with or without a Kubernetes operator. And again, we're gonna dive into a Kubernetes operator in a second here. Now, the next thing is your controllers. Now your controllers confirm that your current state is your desired state. And it does this with reconciliation loops. So those loops, constantly check to confirm that your current state is your desired state. Now, what do we mean by current state and desired state? What I'm talking about here is, let's say you deploy a Kubernetes deployment and within that manifest, you have three replicas. So you want three pods running. Well, how does it confirm that? You know, how can you confirm that those three replicas are always running? That self-healing is there. If one of those replicas goes down, a third one comes up. That's where controllers come into play with that reconciliation loop. It confirms that the current state is the desired state. If the current state or the desired state rather is three replicas, that current state better be three replicas as well. Otherwise, the controller with the reconciliation loops will check and it'll do its best to ensure that that third replica comes up and you know gets up and running. Now, tying it all together, what is an operator? Now, an operator consists of a CRD or multiple CRDs and a controller or multiple controllers. So it's in the same package, okay? So with that, you have the ability to extend the API. You have the ability to create your own API, create your own spec, do all of that stuff and have controllers behind it. So it acts like a real Kubernetes API much like you know the core API groups. So you know you have your deployment, for example, where you deploy your pods, and that is a real life Kubernetes API and a real life Kubernetes object. Same thing when you create an operator, okay? So let's head over to VS Code and we're gonna learn how to get an operator up and running with QBuilder. Okay, now I'm gonna be honest with you. QBuilder is a huge topic in itself. It, literally, there is a book. <laughs> if you Google the QBuilder book, you will see that book come up. It's free, it's it's open. You can you know check it out and you don't have to buy it or anything. But it's huge. It's a very big topic, okay? So because of that, <laughs> we're gonna do our best to dive into getting started with these operators, but we of course can't dive into it all because we don't have three hours to record this video, <laughs> all right? so. First things first, you want to create a new directory, okay? So you can see I'm in that directory here. And within that operator directory, I'm going to create another directory called Mike's Test Op, just operator for short, okay? Now, if I just do a quick ls here, we can see that right here, all right? So now I'm going to go into that Mike's Test Op. And then the next thing that you're going to want to do is you're going to want to install QBuilder, okay? Now, if you don't already have it, 
you're going to want Go or Golang installed as well, which you can find out how to do that just by doing a quick Google search and choosing your operating system. So there's installations for Windows, Mac, Linux, etc. Okay, and then you want to ensure that Cube Builder is on your path. Now, at this point, you want to initialize the Cube Builder project. Okay, so you're going to do that with the Cube Builder init command. You're gonna specify a domain. You can use a general domain, you can use a fake domain, you can use a real one, whatever you'd like, okay? Because this is just for testing purposes. So it's okay if you use a fake one like test.com or something. And then you specify your repo and your repo is where your operator is going to exist. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna run this. All right, and notice here how it's writing some customized manifest for us. It's getting the controller runtime, all that stuff. Now, what exactly does that mean? Well, first things first, let's just do a go mod tidy to ensure that we have all of our dependencies. And then now, if I open up the directory, Mike's test op, notice here how it has templates available. So these templates, it's gonna have customization configurations in here. It's gonna have some Docker files. It's gonna have the main.go to actually run the operator. Really what all of this is, is these are the starter templates, or I don't even wanna call them starter templates. These are the templates that start your journey into the operator. It's essentially just all template code that all operators need, and it gives you the ability to start with it versus writing it all from scratch, okay? Now, the next thing that we wanna do is, we want to build our API using the cube builder create API command. Now, what does this do? Well, if we just go ahead and we take an example here, this nginx config, notice here how I have my API version and then I have my object or my kind. Okay. So this is the API. This is the object. That's what I'm creating here. I'm creating my group, right? And then I'm creating the version. So V1, and then I'm creating the kind, okay? And the kind is similar to, you know, the deployment kind, we're just creating our own. So we're literally just creating our own API here, all right? So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to run this. All right, it's gonna ask me, do I wanna create the resource or the CRD? Do I wanna create the controller? Yes. All right, so that's going through, it's doing its thing, it's creating our Go code, all of that. Now, before we run the make manifest, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna open up this directory one more time. And now notice, if I scroll up, we now have this API folder here, okay? So if you open that up and I go to Mike's API types, okay? And I scroll up and I scroll up until I see Mike's API spec. Oop, actually, I think I, apologies, I'm looking at the wrong one here. Uh, that was a test one. Let me go ahead and open up the real one here. Here it is, okay, sorry about that. So API, and then I open up that Mike's API types, okay? So now, notice here how I just have this default configuration, okay? And I can start adding in what I want to be in my spec. So maybe, for example, I add in image, okay? And I do image here. Omit empty, this just means that there's gonna be no return. There's gonna be no output on the terminal, okay? And then maybe I wanna do something like Mike's phone number string, and then we have to pass that in as JSON, right? Mike's phone number omit empty, okay? Now, this, what does this mean? What does it mean when I'm specifying my spec? Well, again, going back to this Nginx configuration here, you know under your spec, you have things like replicas, name, image, etc. All of this is defined right here in that struct, okay? So literally everything for your spec is defined here in Go code. That's how all of them work. That's how the deployment you know, code works. That's how the pod code works ingress, all of it. That's how it all works. It's all built a similar way, okay? So now I have my types here, and what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna run make manifests, okay? And then once I do that, and I go to my config here, I now have a CRD under bases, and if we scroll down here, we can see our CRD, 
and it has things like image and Mike's phone number because that was built via the spec, okay? And then we could even see a sample here. So this sample is what we would add in here for our spec. So our spec would be image and then Mike's phone number and then we would pass in our information here and this would be our Kubernetes manifest. So with that, that's how you can get started with CRDs, controllers and operators using Cube Builder. And if you wanna check out another project, there is the operator SDK framework, which is a really cool one as well. Thank you so much for watching.